So reducing a problem to another, reducing problem x to problem y means that you can uh, you can transform any instance of x into an instance of y. So problem x is reducible to problem y if you can uh, transform every instance or any, let's say any, any instance of x into an instance of y. Now, in order to explain this, I will use first an example, a simple example that has nothing to do with MP completeness. Just to uh, explain the concept of reduction, what, what we mean by reduction. So let's use a familiar example. Let, you know, problem A be uh, linear equations. So it's ax plus by equals 0. And let problem B be quadratic equations. Where uh, cx squared plus dx plus zero equals uh, plus e equals zero. So these are two problems uh, that are familiar. You know, you have, we have seen this in elementary and uh, middle school, and we know how to solve these problems. Now, what does reduction mean? It means that if I give you a solver for a solver for B, which is a solver that solves quadratic equations. So the solver for quadratic equations takes these coefficients, C, D, and E. You give it C, D, and E, and it gives you what? What does it output? Which is a value of x. Mm -hmm. right, so it gives you the solution or the value of x that satisfies this equation. Now, if I tell you that I have a solver for b, so I have an algorithm or I have a program that can solve quadratic equations, can you use it to solve linear equations and how? Just let c be zero. Well, yeah, exactly. So you set c to zero, and then you set d to a. Yeah, you set you set d equals a, and you set e to b, and then it solves the linear equation problem for you. Okay. So if, if you have this solver that can solve any instance of this problem for any C, D, and E, it should work for C equals zero. So what you're showing here is that you can use a solver for one problem or an algorithm that solves a problem to solve another problem. So in this case, we, are, we, we say that problem A is reducible to B. Problem A is reducible to B. In other words, every instance of A can be transformed to an instance of B. Note here that in this example, it doesn't go in both directions, right? 
not any instance of this can be transformed into an instance of linear equations. So in fact, in this case, you know, which problem is more general? B. Yeah, B is a more general problem. A is a special case of problem B. So that's why we managed to use a solver for B to solve A. So usually it's, uh, you know, by showing that one problem is reducible to another, you are showing that this problem is more general. The problem that you are using, uh, the problem for which a, sol a solver exists is more general. Now, that the, the notation that we will be using to express this here is if A is reducible to B, we're going to say A is reducible to B. Now, this is less than or equal here in this context stands for reducible to. But now, why is using the less than or equal symbol, why is it a good mnemonic here? Why is it, why are we using the less than or equal symbol and why does it make sense to use it here and why is it a good mnemonic? Yeah. Because B can be thought of as like a superset of A. Yeah, a more general problem, yes. It's or it can be thought of as a harder problem. So if you can reduce A to B, then B is harder than A, or at least they are both at the same level of difficulty. So if you can reduce A to B, then A is, is less than or equal to B in difficulty. So here we are comparing the levels of difficulty. Now, in NP-completeness, we're interested in reductions that can be done in polynomial time. So the reduction, which is transforming an instance of a problem to an instance of another problem, this reduction, uh, we're interested only in reductions that can be done in polynomial time that we uh, express using the notation less than or equal subscript P, which means reducible in polynomial time. So A is polynomially reducible to B. Polynomially reducible. If the, the transformation from A to B can happen in polynomial time. So here, is this the case here? How much time did we need to transform an instance of a to an instance of B in this example. Constant. Yeah, it's in fact constant. Because we just set the values of these parameters and there is only a constant number of these parameters. So it's, it's indeed constant time. Now this whole example, I use it to explain the concept of reduction, which is using a solver for one problem to solve another problem. But this has nothing to do with MP completeness because these two problems, we know, we have seen in elementary and middle school that they have solutions and they can be solved in polynomial time. In fact, you know, they can be solved in, uh, in constant time. Okay. Now, we will, uh, you know, switch to uh, problems that, uh, that cannot be solved in, in polynomial time or to the more interesting uh, usage of reduction. Now one thing about reduction is that when we say that x is reducible to y so that we can transform any instance of x to n instance of y, what's interesting about this is it does not imply uh, that the, the transformation can be done in the other direction. So you don't have to cover all instances of Y. You only need to cover all instances of X. So every instance of X must be reducible to an instance of Y, but not every instance. You don't have to cover all instances of Y. You have to cover all instances of X. Okay? Now let's think in the abstract. Uh, what if I tell you that 
I think we're, we're done with this. What if I tell you that problem A is polynomially reducible to problem B and B has a polynomial time algorithm. What can you conclude from this? It can also be solved in polynomial time. Yeah, exactly. Because you can transform any instance of A into an instance of B in polynomial time. And then you can use the solver for B to solve A in polynomial time. So you can picture this as uh, this is a, an instance, instance of A. You take it and you you take this and you do a polynomial time uh, reduction. Let's call it reduction. Then it will give you instance of B. And you take this instance of B and you plug it into uh, a polynomial time solver for B. And this will give you the solution. But both steps can be done in polynomial time because we are assuming that B has a polynomial time algorithm. This is polynomial time. And this is also polynomial time because we are saying that A is polynomially reducible to B. Okay. So, and B has a polynomial time solution. Then this implies that A can be solved in polynomial time. polynomial time in polynomial time okay now what if I tell you that a is polynomially reducible to B and a does not have a polynomial time algorithm. So what if I tell you that a is polynomially reducible to b and a is known not to have or a does not currently have a polynomial time algorithm, what do you conclude about b? b also does not have. b does not have. In fact here you know, the, this less than or equal mnemonic can help a lot because it, it tells you that A is less than or equal to B in terms of difficulty. And if the easier one cannot be solved in polynomial time, then the harder problem necessarily, you know, cannot be solved in polynomial time. In other words, you know, we know that this A is reducible to B. So, if uh, if B had a polynomial time algorithm, we would have been able to to solve A in polynomial time by reducing A to B and using that polynomial time algorithm. So this implies that B does not. have a polynomial time algorithm because if B had a polynomial time algorithm, 
we would have been able to solve A in polynomial time. Okay? Or in other words, you know, you can think of this as uh, you know, A is polynomially reducible to B and uh, you can think of it as A is polynomially reducible to B and B has or B is polynomially solvable A is reducible to B and B is polynomially solvable. This implies that A is polynomially solvable. Now, if you negate this, if A is not polynomially solvable, logically this implies that B is not polynomially solvable. Okay? So, uh, yeah, so it's if A is, is not polynomially solvable, then B is not polynomially solvable. So this is the contrapositive of this. So the polynomial solvability of B implies the polynomial solvability of A. The contrapositive is if A is not polynomially solvable, then B is not polynomially solvable. So does anyone have any doubts about this? Okay, so now what if I tell you that A is polynomially reducible to B, uh, pol polynomially reducible to B, and B, uh, and A has a polynomial time solution. What does, what does this tell you about B? If I tell you that, yeah, you cannot tell you anything, right? So if I tell you that the easier problem has a polynomial time solution, the harder problem may or may not have a polynomial time solution. And if I tell you that A is reducible to B, and B does not have a polynomial time solution, again, you cannot draw any conclusion about A, because A is easier, less than or equal to B in difficulty, so A may or may not have a polynomial time solution. So in fact, this is the technique that we will be using to prove that a given problem is NP-complete by comparing it with one of the problems that are known to be NP-complete. So if you are working on a certain, uh, 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 you know, uh, you are developing a certain software and you encounter an algorithmic problem and you suspect that the problem that you are having is NP-complete and you would like to prove that it's MP complete, you will compare it using reductions with a problem that is known to be MP complete. Now, how can you use this kind of comparison to prove that a problem is, does not have a polynomial time solution? Now, what, what do you need to do? Do you need to reduce uh, the known problem to the problem that you are trying to prove, or the problem that you are trying to prove to the known problem. In which <coughs> direction should you do the reduction? The problem we are trying to do <coughs> the known problem. Well, so this is the problem that you are trying to prove. Let's call it, so x is to be proven, and y is known, known to be MP complete. Okay, now if I reduce x to y, what am I saying? I'm saying that the problem that I'm trying to prove is less than or equal to y in difficulty. Does this prove that x is hard? No, because it can be much easier than y. So it can be maybe, it can be 
a very easy special case of y. But if, so this doesn't prove anything. But if I prove that the known problem, the one that is known to be MP complete, like traveling salesman problem, y is polynomially reducible to x, then I have proven that x, the one that I'm trying to prove, I have proven that it's at least as hard as a problem that is known to be NP complete. So now I have proven that its level of difficulty is at least the same as a problem that is known to be NP complete. So this is the right direction for proving that a problem is NP complete. So you, you reduce a known problem into the problem to be proven. Okay, so before we give examples, actual examples of reductions, uh, we have now, now we are ready to define, to come up, to, to present a formal definition of MP-completeness. 